Uh, Butterfly is in the studio here. Uh, welcome to Radar. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, our pleasure. Now, look, we're playing your song at the moment, 5678. Thank you. Um, it's all right. A little uppy number. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing to do with me. Uh, I, don't, I don't pick the music, unfortunately. Oh, well. Yeah, but, uh, Pass thanks. my thanks on there. I will send your regards. <laughs> um, we're playing that. Um, now, look, you've done a couple of albums now. Uh, this will be your third, right? Yeah, this will be my third. Um, long time between albums. Yeah, a lot of drama between albums, um, between especially between the first, my debut, which was called Flutterby, and then the second one, uh, which was the classic kind of cliche story of being on a record label and then the second album always being the big struggling one that the record label doesn't like as much as I do and you yeah. keep going back and you keep recording. So that was, and then that actually um, ended up with me getting off the label. So that was like a four-year period of, Making the album, waiting around for a couple of years for them to do something with it, and then and then eventually just parting ways. So that was the the big break there. But actually, as soon as I released that second album, Scary Fragile, I actually pretty much launched straight into making this next one. With, All right. With a really you know a, a nice kind of healthy energy towards what this third one would. So would be. was Scary Fragile changed much because of what the label? I mean, were you as happy no, with it I as mean, it could actually, have been? No, I mean actually the the version that I released was. The, the very first um, version that I uh, presented to the label. So it was untouched. It was basically the idea that I wanted. So you won. I, I did. Kind <laughs> I just of, kind didn't of have a label a, anymore. Yeah. I just had to do it independently, <laughs> which is fine, which is great. It was probably time that I, I jumped on the indie bandwagon anyway. A know? win's a win. Yeah. <laughs> let's, say it's, let's say it's a win. Let's say it's a win. Yeah, and they let me take the album with me, which was really wonderful. Yeah, that's yeah. something that they could have really kept if they wanted. They, eh? they could have been really nasty, but my A&R guy over there was still a big fan and was disappointed that it never worked out. So he's like, I think he walked into the his boss's office and was like, you need to let her go and you need to give her the album. Oh, wow. And it, and it happened. So that's cool. I, got, I scored, yeah. Now, you're, um, you're a bit of a producer as well, aren't you? I am. What I You am. have to have a preference. What do you prefer? Of, of what? Of music? Yeah. Of, no, of you producing or, or you or, doing your own ooh, stuff? They're both so different. Um, I enjoy, well, I enjoy, they honestly are, they're so, they're so different because producing is all about the other artist and bringing out their own character. And um, I, I don't want to be one of those producers that just makes everything sound like their own records. Like that's not, it doesn't appeal to me. I want to, I want to be there for that artist and give them the experience um, because I've had some really good experiences with other producers over the, over the years. And I I would like to be able to give that to new artists or established artists um, and to make sure that they're making the albums that they feel really comfortable and proud of and that they're pushing themselves. So you, you wouldn't produce your own record then? Um, I do actually, I, I've co-produced all of them. Right, <laughs> yeah, okay. And I, this, this third one, I was producing by myself for about a year and then I kind of hit a brick wall and I just needed some outside opinion and, uh, ended up working with a good friend, uh, Jamie Kenny in Nashville, which is where I'm based these days. And, uh, we ended up co-producing it and finishing it out together, which was great. Cause to me, that would be the hardest thing because you're so close to the project. Oh, you're way to too To distance close. yourself would be, you know, you'd yeah. end up freaking out. It's good for, it's, it's good for a while cause you get all your ideas out and you feel like, and you know, you've exhausted them and then, and then you really do need somebody else to come in and say, does this sound any good? <laughs> Am I on at least the right road? Yeah, so it, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy being in the studio by myself and just kind of experimenting. But then it, it is so important to have somebody that you trust and that also, you know, it helped that this guy, Jamie, was a big fan of what I did. So he really kind of honoured that and, and kept my ideas. So, um, yeah, that's another thing. Like, uh, you know, apart from just doing my own stuff and producing, I've also just started saying yes to a lot more stuff that comes along and that's included playing bass for Missy and, and um, uh, an artist called Sarah McLaughlin. So I've been touring with her a bit. And um, yeah, it's a, and I have a side pro, I have a band called El Macho back in Nashville. It's this like straight up rock and roll three piece band. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, there's, there's no shortage of outlets for, for creativity yeah. these days. So you can, great. if you want to do something a little bit more. Well, anything you want to do, you want to get rock, rock out, you can do the exactly. Amocho one, you can do, you know, your yeah, stuff. Yeah, it actually you can has made each project a little bit more, like, focused because of that. You know, like, there's an outlet for the rock, there's an outlet for my pop, kind of quirky pop, and uh, and then producing other artists. 